All right, everybody, welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. So you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. Okay, I need to preface a couple things before I before I talk about this. One, I don't hate Sable, and I don't hate Sable players. I am just being dramatic because YouTube kind of requires you to be dramatic. Uh, two, if you like this character, that is perfectly fine. I just have some issues with her. And nothing about it is anything like vitriolic. I mean, no harm or ill will with anything I'm about to say. Okay? Okay. So, I don't like Sable's design. And the reason I don't like her design... This is going to be really quick. I just, I just you know, uh, main topic of the video. Uh, I think it's very generic. I think it's very just attractive goth character. And that's all they did. I know there are some things in there. But I think anyone calling this character original, even for Dead by Daylight, just doesn't consume other media. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This character is, is a pretty generic stereotype, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with having a generic design. A generic and simple design is actually usually the better design to go with. But people claiming this character is super unique and uh, th th there's nothing else like it, I just I can't agree with you. I, j I just I honestly can't. Okay, uh, on to her lore. We're not going to get into the deep depths of the lore. I think it's fine. Um, I will say I do find it kind of ironic that a lot of people are relating to it because by definition she is either misunderstood or relatable. I think it's if everyone is relating to her being misunderstood, I just don't think it makes sense. That's just a me thing. Once again, it's a trope I see a lot in media and it happens a lot with quote misunderstood characters. Um, yes. And last thing is the perks. So her perks are very interesting. I like the idea behind all of them. All of them, all three of them, uh, are basement themed, which is really cool. And we even got a new type of perk with this one, uh, the, the Invocation, which is basically like a seance. And I'm curious if they keep making these, because if they do, I'm here, I'm all for it. New types of perks are great, and we should keep adding them and not forgetting the new types of perks we made. Cough, cough, boons. Cough, cough, scourge hooks. Um, and we should keep... And cough, cough, teamwork. Forgot teamwork. So we should, we should keep going with that, okay? Uh, in any case, so... Uh, Invocation Weaving Spiders. This is the first new Invocation perks. So, in the basement, there's a circle that will spawn at the start of the match. You can go to the uh, to the Invocation in the basement. Your aura is shown to survivors, and they can join in. Um, it takes 120 seconds to uh, cause the effect to complete. And you can accelerate this process by 100% if someone else has the perk and does it with you. 50% if they don't have the perk. Once it's complete... Uh, all gens re instantly receive 15 charges to repair progress, and you instantly become broken um, for the rest of the trial. Now, I've heard some people ask about the conditions with this, because what about other incubation... Uh, um, uh, inc incubation... I cannot say the word. What about other seance perks? I'm just calling it a seance because that's what it is. Uh, so I think the deciding factor, similar to how boons are always 24 meters and always take a certain amount of time to bless and all this stuff... I think the determining factor for that is going to be the 120 seconds. I think that's what it's always going to be. And it's not going to change. The reason I say that is because it's at the beginning right of the perk. And the broken is actually an effect from the perk. Uh, so it's always going to be 120 seconds with the 100% acceleration. If someone else has the perk, 50 if they don't. I think that's going to stay as it is and, and always will be that for other perks that come out like this. Uh, two, so the actual effect. Um... 15 charges to all gens I don't think is enough for how long this perk takes to activate. Now, there are two ways to use this perk. You can either A, use it at the beginning of the match when you are least likely to get found in the basement and you are most likely to get use because it will affect seven generators at the same time. So, in essence, you're getting more bang for your buck. Or two, wait till the end of the match and use it to stop a three gen from happening. Now, with some of the precautions they put in to stop 3-genning recently, 3-gens um, are not nearly as common and not nearly as hard to uh, handle. So I don't think it's going to be very useful for that. Uh, for the early game, it's the problem with the early game use is, while yes, you are spreading it out between all the gens, the killer has the mo is going to start pressuring them and getting the regression, because this regression can still be brought down. Uh, one single use of Pop Goes the Weasel is basically going to get rid of this, for the most part, unless the gen is only at 15. Uh, and being broken the entire match is a massive thing. I have seen some people combining this with No Mither to some good effect. 
Um, because you're already going to be broken, why not just start broken? Uh, so that's an interesting thing to do with it. I don't think this perk's going to be very useful in solo queue. Um, however, in a swift, I can see it being decently good in coordination, but nothing amazingly broken. I think it's going to be one of those ones that's going to be interesting. We're going to see some builds around it. We're going to see it here and there, and blah, blah, blah. For those trying to use this perk on week one, it comes out. Uh, Territorial Imperative is probably going to go up in pick rate for about a week. <laughs> Similar to how Deerstalker did when Plot Twist came out. Uh, will it be good? No. Uh, will killers probably lose more gains because they're running Territorial instead of another gen regression perk or something like that? Yes, 100%. <laughs> so get ready for that. Uh, Strength of the Shadows. This is probably my favorite perk from all three of hers that came out. So basically, uh, what this does is when you go into the basement, you unlock Strength of the Shadows. You can heal yourself at 60% of the normal heal rate. Upon finishing, you get the Killer's OR for 10 seconds. So... It's basically self-care in the basement. It's about a 27-ish second heal. Also, you only have to be at about the halfway point of the stairs to activate this. You don't have to go all the way down to the basement. That is just how it is. Um, I like this perk, and the aura reading on the killer is actually super nice. Uh, it's like a small thing that didn't need to be added into it, but it's also a global aura reading. And the way I see it, if you're going to run this... Don't just run to basement to use it. I know some people were doing that on PTB, but we're also testing things, so I wasn't, you know, taking too much into account during that. Uh, but if you happen to be near the basement and you need to heal and you don't have a med kit for whatever reason, just run. You can just do this. Side note, uh, if you really do like this perk, I would suggest maybe start to run pharmacy in your builds. Um... Because Pharmacy gives you a guaranteed greed medkit in a chest when you're injured. And there is a guaranteed chest in the basement. Now, technically speaking, this is actually faster than that because you still have to open the chest. But a medkit can get you two heals. Uh, so, just, just keeping that in mind. Pharmacy might start getting some use uh, after people realize how good this can be. Uh, just saying. We'll see. Probably not. <laughs> Next is Wicked. Uh, this is one that was changed from the PCB. Um, on the PCB currently, it has something to do with getting rid of hemorrhage stacks it's not it's weird it's strange uh and mangled and they're changing mangled so they had to change this perk whatever they made it a more basement basement centered perk uh basically it grants you <laughs> you can instantly unhook yourself uh in basement uh the aura of the killer is revealed to you for 20 seconds after unho unhooking yourself or being unhooked so <laughs> I like the aura reading aspect of it. I think that's cool. It doesn't say that you have to do that from the basement. It just says if you're unhooked or hooked. So I don't know how that's going to work. We haven't been able to test it yet. Uh, if it's any unhooked, that's actually really cool. And I like that. Uh, now, being able to unhook yourself in the basement. So, this is just a better deliverance. Uh, but it should be noted, if you don't get hooked in the basement for your first hook, this perk is literally useless. So it's much like Deliverance. If you don't, if you get hooked first, this perk doesn't do anything for you. Do I think it's going to be massively broken? No. I do think if you play around the basement with uh, this and Strength in the Shadows, though, it can be very annoying, especially if a whole team is running it. But I don't think it's useless, or it's going to be super, super OP. I think it's going to be an interesting play style that some people can utilize, um, and... It's going to be very it just just interesting overall. That's that's the common theme with all of these perks from Sable. I really do like all of her perks. I think all of her perks bring something unique and new to the game, um, in the sense that they all affect the basement, which is something we haven't really had perks do very often. The closest we've had are killer perks that, frankly, no one uses. <laughs> uh, rib old monster shrine. Uh, but yeah, tell me what you guys think about the perks, though. I'm really curious. I think uh, incubation or. Er, Seance, whatever it's called, uh, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting. And once again, to prelude the title and the thoughts on this video, I do not hate Sable or her players, okay? Just, just making that clear, okay? Just, just YouTube, go to YouTube. All right, the map, okay. There has been a lot of controversy about the map. I think the new map is fine. I think the main building isn't too super strong. I don't think there's any loops or any real uh, tiles I was superly oppressed by. Like, I felt like, oh, I can't do anything here. 
The one that's constantly getting brought up recently has been, my phone just went off, I'm very professional. The one that's been constantly brought up has been the double pallet uh, loop, where there's like two pallets sitting right next to each other and it makes it a long god loop, basically. Um, I think it's fine. I think there's still choice there for the killer to break the pallet. You have to drop two pallets, basically. Um, and if you're able to loop the killer for that that well and get both of those pallets to drop before they have to break it, I think it's fine. Plus, it doesn't, from what I was able to test, it doesn't really connect to anything, which made it okay, in my opinion. Plus, I mean, Chucky, so uh, this pallet, this, this loop means nothing to me. <laughs> I kid. I kid. Um... But yeah, uh, I think the map is fine. I know some people are complaining about it being too large. Now, once again, the thing with that is, since a lot of us were using a killer with a teleport, I don't think it was very easy for us to get very much real thoughts on the map. Uh, but from what I was playing on it, I thought it, it, it felt fine. It felt decently sized. Um, like I said, the main building didn't seem too oppressive on either side. Uh, there's some a lot of cool animations. The visual design is amazing, and I love that they brought a map in for an older character. I think that was something great. If there's one thing I will say about Sable's Lore that I do enjoy, I do enjoy that it's connected to another character. How it's connected, the devs will tell us one day, I'm sure. Um, but I do enjoy that it is connected, okay? Uh, yes. So, if you made it to the end of the video, uh, here, here's the thing, okay? I, I apologize to any Sable mains, I really do. I, just, I gotta be clickbaity, unfortunately. I will change the thumbnail if people get too mad. I promise. That being said, just because I don't like a character's design, I'm not the biggest fan of their lore, does not mean I hate the character or anything they're associated with. I'm just saying that now and making that up front. Uh, I hope you're all civil in the comments with, with some of this. Um, this is mostly talking about the perks at the end of the day anyways. Uh, not so much the character design. I'm not a character designer. Uh, I just don't think she's that as unique as some people are making her out to be. In any case, I love y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, bye.